Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode on the Growth Project Podcast, a podcast for you if you're ready to make a real impact in this lifetime. Whether you're looking to start your own business, travel the world, or simply live life with more purpose, the Growth Project Podcast will guide you every step of the way. Hosted by motivational speaker, a life coach, and self-proclaimed truth dealer, Sharice Spear, you can be sure that the Growth Project Podcast will guide you in a progressive and authentic way towards your highest, most badass, unapologetic self. So sit back, buckle up, and get ready for the ride. Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to another episode on The Growth Project. My name is Sharice, and you guys know I am forever your host. So today's episode, I don't know the title yet, but I do know what it's going to be about. So today's episode is going to be all about minding your own thoughts, minding your energy and minding the energy that you put out into the world. So I guess this is going to um, touch a little bit on manifestation as well and how basically your thoughts create your own reality. I am sure that this is something that you guys have heard before, that our thoughts create our reality. Um, Many people have talked about this. Many new thought leaders, maybe many new age thought leaders have talked about that. Um, Some of my favorites are James Allen. Um, Also, we have like the writer of Think and Grow Rich. He also talks uh, a lot about that. Um, Earl Nightingale. Like these are all people, if you guys just like, write like um, books like Think and Grow Rich. If you guys uh, do a simple Google for like new new thought um, new thought philosophy or new thought books um, like Think and Grow Rich, you're gonna find so many. And one of my favorites um, is by James Allen, and it's As a Man Think It. So, As a Man Think It, which is actually a quote from the Bible as well um i'm not sure the verse but i know that this is a quote from a bible it's as a man thinketh so he is okay and this is such a powerful 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 phrase because it truly shows us how what we are thinking we're believing essentially is what plays out in life so you guys know that i've already mentioned the um you guys know i've already mentioned on a couple episodes that you know life is kind of just like this theater like it is like this blank state like we're in the movies and the screen is black and there is the the screen is black or white or whatever it's just a whiteboard and we have the projector and the projector is our mind and our consciousness and whatever we decide to plug into there which will be the movie is what we're going to see on the screen of life And if you are interested in, you know, delving a little bit deeper into that, um, I suggest that you listen to episode seven of this podcast that I'm going to link in the show notes. Um, You are in a perfect place for your next level, how to tap into your inner wisdom. On that episode, we discuss a lot about how tapping into your inner voice really can help you start creating the reality that you want to create. So I highly suggest that you guys check out this episode after this one. Back to the whiteboard. Your thoughts create your reality. And that is part of the basis of manifestation, of bringing forth any goal, any worthy goal that you want to bring forth. Anything that you are saying that I want to create, I want to do this, I want to have a business or I have this idea for this new exclusive thing and that you don't fully know what it is. If you want to bring forth that vision, you're going to have to think the the correct thoughts or have accurate thinking to bring forth that vision i'm going to give you guys an example of this so it's like let's say you want to you know have this new futuristic 
fashion brand or you know business or whatever that offers these really cool exclusive um, products right and on this journey, you're manifesting this. So first, you need to get this vision super clear in your head, right? You're going to get this this vision super clear in your head. It doesn't actually have to be super duper concrete. It just needs to be a moment in, in, in time that you're looking forward to. Whether it be you on stage collecting an award or you hitting a million sales or you um, styling a specific person or whatever it is, you just need to have this, um, this moment or this specific thing that represents that your vision has come to fruition. Once you have that, you will notice by just replaying that, reflecting on that constantly in your imagination, in your mind, that you are going to have hunches, you are going to have inspiration, and you're going to have ideas that would potentially lead you to the manifestation of that desire, okay? So, that is a part of how manifestation works. Now, the other part... Um, that is what usually gets into the way of almost everyone's manifestation is our subconscious mind. So if, um, so I'm sure that you guys have seen this like photo of the, the iceberg, right? The iceberg is not usually what we see. It's like on top what we see of the iceberg is usually just like five percent of what the iceberg is five to ten percent and then the whole mass of what it really is is underneath and that is the same thing when it comes to our subconscious mind five percent of what we use so our our conscious mind that is like really influenced by our five senses and all of the data and every all of the interpretations that we could possibly have like from all the data that we're receiving through our five senses that is our conscious mind and then we have our subconscious mind that is or our subjective mind that is the other part of the mind that is taking care of all of the processes that we are not taking care of through our conscious mind so you do not tell your heart to to beat you do not tell yourself to breathe you do not pass you don't you don't tell you know your liver to excrete things like this is all taken care of by the subconscious mind now in my last video about knowing yourself and So in my last video about, you know, the fear of not knowing everything, I discussed the fact that when we came here in life, right, we already came with subconscious knowledge. We already came with knowledge. When we came here, we, even though we were babies, we were not without knowledge. We were not just like a blank slate. We came here with specific knowledge already embedded in us through our subconscious things like you know this is our mom this is our dad we were able to recognize them we we're able to recognize certain things when we're happy when we're outside when we need to shit again subconsciously all of those processes were taken care of for for us from our subconscious mind so as babies we already came here with certain intelligence that's the that's the right word so Our subconscious mind is always being formed and it is always taking in information from our conscious mind, from the interpretations that we have on a day-to-day basis. Our subconscious mind stores that information, it sorts it out, it puts it where it needs to go and then it it directs your life from the information and from the interpretations that it has received throughout your whole entire life. The thing about your subconscious mind as well is that it will always look for evidence to prove. So your conscious mind will always look for evidence to prove what is in your subconscious mind right. This causes it to build up like evidence and make like whatever is in your subconscious mind seem more true and more of a fact 
okay? So knowing this and understanding this and downloading this information, what does this mean for us? Why is it so hard for us to bring forth um, our manifestations or our goals when, you know, we want it, we say we want it, but then, you know, time comes to do it. Um, Yeah, we may have the fear, but sometimes it's not even the fear. Like sometimes it's not even the fear, but it's what's in our subconscious mind that is blocking us from sometimes reaching our goals or going towards our goals because of certain interpretations that we have in there. So it was Carl Jung who said, until you make your unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. Now, this quote is something that I wanted to add here because I... This is a quote that I personally live by and that I definitely, definitely believe in. If you are unaware of your mechanisms, the way you protect yourself, your trauma, your triggers, all of those things, then you will live your life from a very um, reactive point of view. You'll live your life from a very reactive point of view, from a very reactive place. And it will seem that like everything out there is out to get you. Everything is everyone else's fault. Like things just keep happening to you and never for you. Things are just, it's just like, whoa me. It's like a victim mindset. And it's just like, no matter what I do, like things never work out or people hate me or people don't like me or it's because of this, it's because of that, it's because of my parents, it's because of this and that and the other. So a reason why a lot of us are not actually bringing forth the goals that we want to or the things that we want is because we're not, first of all, self-aware. So self-awareness is what gets you from what gets you from living in a very reactive living letting your subconscious just take like all the decisions for you and it puts you in a position where it's like okay i'm going to take back control i'm going to step into the driver's seat of my life and i'm going to start seeing like what are the reactions that i have to certain things to life in general so when your subconscious is running the show it's like literally that you're in the back seat of a driveless car like there's no driver and you're just there and the car is just driving by itself is driving by itself and (laughs) that's actually fucking scary i had a dream like that once and it was fucking scary but literally that is what it's like when you let your subconscious you let your biases you let all of your um your your what's the word that i'm looking for all your conditioning everything that everyone has told you because everything that everyone has told you that has produced an emotional reaction in you because the subconscious loves thoughts that are energized with feeling so if someone told you something in your childhood that you were like this or you were selfish or that you were fat or ugly or whatever and you had an emotion a strong physical reaction towards that thing that went into your subconscious i can guarantee you you unless you diffused that situation it went into your subconscious and you possibly still believe that about yourself no matter the amount of affirmations no matter the amount of things that she said if you do not do the inner work become self-aware become self-reflective you know ask yourself the honest deep hard questions this is still running part of your life and it is making decisions for you and it is affecting the way that you actually see the world how you make decisions and how you go about your life it's affecting what you think is possible and not possible for you so you so your thoughts create your reality right and now we're learning that a huge part of What creates our realities are subconscious and our subconscious, we actually do not know what's in there, right? So how do you take back control and start actually, you know, pruning or start actually, 
you know, seeing what's in your subconscious and like removing it or like doing little surgery. I like to call it brain surgery because literally that is what we are doing is making small incisions and taking this part out and taking this little part out and taking this little part out and infusing it with what we actually want to believe. So one of the first things that you can do is understand that your conscious mind is the gatekeeper of what goes into your subconscious mind. Meaning that most of the time, nothing can go to the subconscious mind, like unless it's a subliminal or something like that, without passing through the conscious mind. So if you're aware and you are understanding that you are the gatekeeper of your subconscious, you allow what penetrates it what suggestions you take in then you need to guard your mind and this is why it's mind your own energy mind your own thoughts you need to mind your mind and what is going into it so something very simple is like Let's say you're at a family event or you are surrounding yourself with friends and, you know, someone says this type of comment that you don't necessarily agree with. Like, no one wants to work anymore or women aren't submissive anymore. or I prefer a woman that is modest and doesn't show her body. Like, everyone's just a like a hoe or a thought these days and like women don't care anymore and blah, blah, blah. Let's say something like that. Let's say that this and let's say that your take kind of like offense to it because maybe you're like very pro women, very feminist or whatever, right? You need to make sure that this opinion and this suggestion doesn't actually make it sway to your subconscious. And the way that you do that is by being super aware in the moment of what you're thinking or how you're reacting based on what that person is saying. So something I like to do um, when I get into these situations is that I automatically say in my brain and I tell myself whenever someone is saying something that I do not agree with, um, I tell myself like, I do not agree with this. I say it in my brain. I'm like, that's an interesting perspective, but I do not agree with this. I do not let this, like, penetrate me. I do not believe in this. That is it. Something as simple as that can block this suggestion from going into your brain. Because I stopped it. I told my conscious mind, you do not even need to register this information because I do not believe in it. I do not want to give further attention to this information or this is really interesting, but it's not for me. And voila. Also, I pay attention to how I am reacting emotionally in that situation. If I am feeling angry, if I am feeling a how, I regulate my system take a couple deep breaths like I said I remind myself like hey there's no no need to react to this like no one's attacking you you're safe and like this is just an opinion so you can breathe you can let go all of the tension like no one this doesn't hurt you like it's not going to hurt you it can't do anything to you like you're okay And I regulate my system until I feel like I'm back to a neutral state because that helps not have any specific thoughts going directly to my subconscious mind as I regulate my system, go back into a neutral state and I can simply respond to the person like, hmm, wow, that's interesting or just like, I personally don't think that women are more slutty or anything like that like that today I find it really cool that they are more liberated and that they're taking their own agency into their hands and I'm able to respond from such a calm and centered place because I did that work of making sure that I am not reacting but I am responding so that was the first thing the second thing that you can do um, speaking of reacting versus responding is learn to respond to things instead of reacting to things and all that takes is three seconds 
in between someone saying something to you, you feeling something and then blurting something out and you taking a deep breath and asking yourself, how do I want to respond to this? How do I want to respond to this? Do I want to respond like this? Do I want to respond like that? You know, what, how can I respond to this in a way that I would be proud of? How can I respond to this in a way that aligns with my values? Do I want to respond to this? You know, just taking those three seconds, like, um, I think there's a proverb that's saying, like, turn your tongue into, like, um, your, turn your tongue into your mouth, like, ten times over, drink some water, whatever, just, like, give yourself that pause, like, that pause, it's going to change a lot for you, and this is also going to, um, like, help you avoid those situations where you say things that you don't really mean and I think we've all had those situations where it's like oh I'm so sorry I didn't mean that or I didn't mean that I don't know why I said that and that is a direct example of what it's like when you react from a place of reactivity and from your subconscious without processing and filtering the information Because that was a direct trigger, you had a response, and your subconscious took over and started protecting you by spewing poison at the other person. So my next tip um, to making sure that you are guarding your, you are guarding the door towards your subconscious and that you are not letting anything else that you do not want in there, in there. And on my next episode, I'm going to talk about how to work with your subconscious and how to even just like clear out things that have been in your subconscious for a long time and how to even identify some of the beliefs that you have. First, I want you guys to stop letting things go in and then after you're going to know how to take things out. So another you know, another tip that I have when it comes to guiding your subconscious mind and not allowing certain things to go in is being a very, very objective when it comes to your interpretations. So something that I noticed about me and something that I, I attribute a lot of my success to and a lot of like just the way that I relate to people, just the way that I get things to go my way, um, and and all of that is that I try my best to have a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. And the thing is that a fixed mindset is what is going to make you fail every single time over and over again. Like there is no way that you can succeed with a fixed mindset. Unless you're fixed on the fact that like you're the greatest of all time. Like I don't even know. But I have a very open mind. I leave place for interpretation and I leave place to be surprised over and over again. I try not to jump to conclusions because I realize that we do not know anything. We can presume, we can assume, we can even make great um, deductions, you know, like we can deduce things, we can take facts and research and all of that, but it still doesn't come it's, it all comes down to the fact that like everything is perception everything is perception it is how it is being perceived that is like what we think is truth so one person can be seeing something from one side and say oh this is a six and the other person can be looking at it from the other side and say that this is a nine and neither of them are wrong Neither of them are wrong. That is what life is about. We all have different perceptions based on how we grew up, what we believe to be true, what we believe to be true about the world. And because of this, we are susceptible to certain biases, to believing that things are just this way or that way. So if you don't work hard, you're not going to make money. 
all relationships are hard or that life is just hard or just like all men cheat or just like you just can't do it because like anytime you believe in like an absolute and it's just like there's no way that this thing can happen like that is part of having a fixed mindset because the thing is that we live in such an abundant universe and we live in a universe filled with so much possibilities like every time someone has said like that's not possible that can't be done like someone has come along and proved them wrong and it just shows us that you know truth is very subjective and truth is you know what we're living maybe right now until someone else comes and proves us fucking wrong so you there is nothing that you need to believe that needs to be so concrete and so absolute to the point where you know you can't be open to receiving new information and that's why I keep my mind very open and I don't make full conclusions about things I'm like hmm, I'm not sure about this right now I'm gonna let other things come to me before I make some sort of like conclusion that benefits me or that serves me but I leave my mind open to gathering other interpretations so that I'm not always just making like these jumping to conclusions and then it's downloaded in my subconscious mind and then that what keeps and that keeps playing out you know I'm like hmm let's see I'm not sure like sometimes like one way that I see this too is that people talk about celebrities like they really know them like um oh he definitely did this he definitely did that he's that type of person like he's a narcissist and it's just like you don't even know these things but you're like absolutely convinced that you absolutely do like oh drake is like this i don't know kanye he's like this like and you make this conclusion and you say like this is reality this is truth and you and it's in your mind and after that point like every single time they keep coming up or they come up and or you see them on your feed like you subconsciously replay that you know truth that you say is truth for you or that thought pops up in your mind and you're like "Mm mm-hmm so true and you don't understand that what's happening there is that you're literally creating the evidence your brain is creating the evidence to support that belief that you originally had so think about how much you actually do this in your daily life and then think about truly truly is the thoughts is the reality that you're in currently real or is it that you just think that that is what reality is and therefore it is it's like is the only way to make it is there only one way to success is there only one path in life are we only supposed to all do the same thing to make it like or is that just the collective reality that we have because we've been placed with certain thoughts in our head and therefore we manifest it by thinking that it's like that so definitely some food for thought definitely some brain food here think about are all the thoughts in your mind completely true or is there room do you have room to leave your mind open enough to receive a different interpretation and i think i'm gonna end this episode out by this wonderful wonderful quote that says that true intelligence or the highest form of intelligence is the ability to observe without evaluating the ability to observe without evaluating so think about that and let that sink in let that sink in for a second let that sink in overnight let that marinate that you do not always have to place meaning or evaluate or um, conclude like we don't always have to do that I know we think that and that our brain thinks that because it's like once you made up your mind about something or you have an opinion about something then it's more solid or that it stays. But there's no actual rule that we have to go through life like this. And I feel like going through life in a different way, in a way that's more fluid and lighter, actually brings us closer to determining what is actual truth versus just having all of this random 
biases and conclusions and second of all it really helps us you know find accurate meaning and to think in the way that is going to be aligned with our goals because if we see that you know we don't need to place meaning on every single thing and that one way of thinking is not necessarily better than the other then we can just choose to think you know the thoughts that will align us with our goals the thoughts that will help us the thoughts that um, benefit us thoughts that will positively impact our subconscious mind and impress our subconscious mind and will naturally manifest and create the life that we are aligned to and that we want so Thank you guys so much for tuning in to today's episode. My mic cut out a little bit towards the end um, and I didn't realize for some reason, but um, it was just a little bit like five minutes at the end. So I'm just going to keep it in. But thank you guys so much for listening uh, to today's episode. And as always, if you guys want to work with me, want to see any of my work, any of my videos, all of that, you can follow me at Sharice Fierce on Instagram. Um, you can also check out your girl now on TikTok. Like I've been on TikTok. I've been loving it. I've been having so much fun on TikTok. Um, I suggest you find my TikTok through my Instagram because the name could possibly change. But it's currently... Um, at she spits wisdom on tiktok but i really suggest either you find me through instagram or you type my name sharice and find me that way um because i'm still settling on a name uh maybe you guys could end up helping me with that but thank you like i said so much for tuning in um but i'm always grateful that you guys uh tune in but yeah, definitely check that out. So much wisdom on there. So much good content. It's like, I feel like a different a different side of me is definitely on TikTok. So go, def- so go, go, go check that out. Um, and if you want some help, you know, tapping into your intuition, tapping into your inner self, knowing your wants and desires, your true wants and desires, learning to listening to the little inner voice in you, go download um, my ebook. Go download my ebook that is about self-trust. It is called You're More Powerful Than You Think and it's all about cultivating connection with your inner self, with your inner being, creating self-trust and learning to listen to the little voice inside of you and to your intuition. So it is completely free. So you guys can check it out on my website, sharicefierce.com and go download that. It is about like a four to five page ebook with like, Uh, journal prompts and worksheets that you can use it is a self-help ebook so um, I definitely recommend it especially if you want something to work on your self um, development and on your self-trust at home by yourself so thank you guys for listening all of that and I love you guys as always and definitely stay tuned for the other videos um, all about our subconscious mind and how we can use it to manifest the reality that we desire so can't wait to talk to you guys soon